So I'm going to cover in this video five different things you can do to improve your front crawl, to swim for distance, to be efficient, and to save energy. So the first thing is head position. Now, I don't know about you, but I was taught to look forward. Now, when you look forward with your head up, because the head is the heaviest part of the body, what actually happens is the hips and the chest want to drop. Now, every inch your hip is down is drag and resistance. So you want your hip as high as possible. Makes sense. Because water is resistance, is drag. So the higher you can get yourself in the water and the more efficient, the better, the faster you're going to be and the more efficient you're going to be. So having your head looking down helps bring the hips up, but also takes pressure off the neck. Now that's really important because if you're looking forward for a long period of time, you're going to get a sore neck, you're going to have sore shoulders as well when you do your recovery arm. So looking down is neutral. And you only have to think how you walk. When you walk, you look forward. Now, if you take a photograph of yourself looking forward when you walk and you put yourself down in the water, that's looking down if you get what I'm saying. So the body position from upright to down in the water is a downward position, not forward. If you're looking forward down in the water, that's equivalent looking at the sky when you're walking. So head position looks down. And by looking down, what it also does is it helps you keep a still head. Now, what's the benefit of a still head? Well, the head is the rudder. So your body will go where your head goes. So if you move your head around, your arms are going to have to compensate, which is extra effort, in order to keep you in a straight line. So a massive thing that is overlooked in swimming when you learn is the importance of A, head position, and B, having a still head. So the head is the rudder. As I say, when you walk, you don't move your head all over the place. You keep it still in order to walk in a straight line. Swimming is the same. So that's the first thing that you want to deal with in order to keep you efficient, to keep you in a straight line, and to ensure that you're not doing any extra effort you don't need to do, and also taking pressure off the shoulders. Okay, so number two, rotation. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know I talk about the importance of rotation. In my case, I rotate from side to side. 90 degrees to 90 degrees is the most that you can possibly rotate with balance. And I'll say that, with balance, without over-rotating. Now, when I was taught, I was taught for a slight bit of rotation in case I over-rotate. But that's because they're not dealing with the head position. If I move the head around and when I rotate, then I'm likely to over-rotate if I go too far. But if I teach myself how to be on the side with a still head, then I can rotate from side to side with balance. My core connects to keep me streamlined and I just have to practice and that's where my drills come in from Ocean Walker Vimeo. Or if you have a lesson with me in person, that's what we teach. We have a system that goes through the drills to get you balanced. But Ocean Walker Vimeo is something that you can learn online. Um, and it's really, really effective. Lots of different videos to build up the stroke. Okay, so rotation. What does rotation do? Well, when you rotate onto your side, you're pulling less body mass through the water. So you're the smallest you can possibly be most efficient, like a fish. You want as minimal drag. Now, I have a big frame, so if I make myself flat, I'm going to have a lot of drag. But if I put myself on the side, then I'm going to be as small as I possibly can be. So when I pull, I'm going to actually pull less body mass, if that makes sense. And if I make that 90 degrees rotation with balance, I'm going to create the maximum momentum possible and therefore the maximum glide. So glide, which is what you see here when I get that length of stroke, where I don't have to do lots of strokes in between, I'm just maintaining that momentum. It's just like on land-based sports like shot put, discus, climbing, um, hammer throw, they all use the hips, golf, and that creates momentum on land. So swimming is no different. What I'm actually doing is I'm creating the rotation through the hips here. So I'm rolling the feet into the center line and then I kick 
my hips across and I pull. So it becomes a roll, kick and a pull. What I'm not doing is spearing or driving my chest. Uh, it then becomes chest driven, which isn't as fast. So the reason that you see my arms just lightly going in the water, not a lot of splash, is because I manage it, that arm drop, through a feet rotation, which takes my hand into water. It's almost like I've got a steering wheel on my feet, which I turn my feet inwards in order to delicately drop the arm and hand into the water. So rotation creates momentum and glide, takes pressure off the shoulders as well. It means that you're pulling in a very streamlined position and you're lighter. So that's the second thing that you want to master. The other thing, which is an extension of what I've just said by rotating, is as a result of this rotation and all those benefits I've said, the shoulder is naturally higher. So what that means is I don't have to sweep my arm high overhead. Now that's a problem for injury. The biggest crater of injury is this high arm overhead. Same with tennis, pitching in baseball, anything overhead. So what I do is I do a low arm semicircle sweep. Because I've got natural elevation, in other words, my shoulder's coming out the water, I don't have to lift. In fact, I actually go low and round, which protects the shoulder. It's been proven by surgeons, osteopath, physio. They're all saying if you do a semicircle motion, with a recovery arm, it protects the shoulder. So that's going to protect the shoulder from injury and also it's going to be effortless. So it's going to save a lot of energy. You imagine if you lift high overhead, which actually doesn't do anything, you know, the pull is what does something. So all this lifting is just a waste of energy. So you want to avoid it. So that's the third thing you want to do. Okay, the fourth thing is the foot flick. So I call it a foot flick because I keep my legs very straight. I don't bend my knee much, which allows the foot to press down into the water like a tail of a fish. What I don't want to do is bend my knee a lot. That will delay the stroke. It will lift my foot out of the water. I lightly keep my foot rigid and then it will just fall through the water, not connect properly. So what I use is a two beat kick, right kick, right pull, left kick, left pull. And what that does is help me into the rotation. So I use it for the rotation. Again, check out Ocean Walker Vimeo. It becomes very clear if you subscribe to Ocean Walker Vimeo on how I do that and the importance of getting that length of stroke. I'm gliding up to two meters as a result of this foot flick in combination with the pull. So it's all about timing. That's really important. Okay, so foot flick is a pressing down movement in order to rotate my feet sideways to get me on the side so then I pull less body mass and all those things that I've said before. Okay, catch number five. We were told to extend out high on top of the water and then go over the barrel and push water back. The problem with that is, is Unless you're very flexible in the shoulders, you're going to push water down. Now, if you push water down, your chest comes up. So unless you're, I don't know, 18 to 20 years of age or maybe even 25, but when you get 30, 40, 50 plus, then you're not going to be as flexible in the shoulder. So the likelihood, like I say, is you're going to struggle to push water back from that high body position. Also, when your, heart, your arm is high, your chest is up and your hips are down. So actually, it's the arm being high with the eyes forward is going to potentially sink your body down. Because what you can't have is you can't have your eyes forward, your arm really high and your feet high because that's an arch in the middle of your back. That's why I've got a problem with extra buoyant wetsuits, which encourage you to look forward with your arms up high and then they bring your ankles up out the water and then you've got an arch which is going to cause pain in the back poor boy is the same principle so when your eyes are down head position with that rotation that is going to encourage you to have a deeper arm so 40 45 degrees now when you're on your side water flows over the top of you so if you're flat yeah and you had a lower arm the water would hit you in the chest but if you're on your side with a lower arm, it'll pass over the top of you. And the point is, anyway, you're going to be inefficient. Everybody's inefficient in water. It's just how inefficient you are. So a lower arm means that you can get a nice catch pulling water back. It's not going to put pressure on the shoulder. So you're going to maximize that pull without any pain. You're not going to push water down, which is going to bring your chest up and make you more inefficient. So you're going to be in the catch pulling water back. And that's what we want. So that 
Early entry, sending it lower is really going to make a difference to the shoulder and can really going to make a difference to the catch. And again, to reiterate, if your arm is high and your head's up, your hips are going to want to drop. You're going to want to push water down. And the only way you go forward in swimming is pushing water back. I hope that helps. If you want to subscribe to Ocean Walker Vimeo, I've got 35 videos. I'll add a video every single month. It's just £12 to subscribe. You can cancel any time. Or come and see me at the Ocean Walker Academy in Lincoln for a one-to-one -one lesson. And I'm also doing swim camps around the world. So check it out.